Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Mary Wiley-Smith and I'm the um, Deputy Public Service Commissioner and I'd like to um, welcome you to a session on the data profession and the launch of the profession and also the announcement of the new Head of Profession. So it's a pretty exciting time for us here in the service. Before I begin though, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting today and pay my respects to elders, both past, present, and also emerging. As we're um, beaming live to lots of different locations around Australia, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners in all of those locations as well today. So um, here we are, we're gonna talk about the data profession. Um, in this session, you are gonna hear about what it's all about. Um, we're going to be joined by the new head of profession and also we've got the public service commissioner my boss, uh, Peter Wilcott, sitting beside me here, who's going to talk to you about professions model more generally, the aims of the data profession, and he's gonna take some time now to actually introduce our new head of profession. So thanks for joining us today, and I'll hand over to Peter Wilcott. Thank you, Mary, and a great pleasure to be here today in Melcon. Uh, we're gonna launch the uh, profession, the data profession, and the head of profession. It fits very much in within the government's reform agenda. What we're looking at is a really much more joined up uh, public service, a public service that can act as one enterprise. And in thinking through all the things we need to do to make sure that we can, we, we can bring this about, that we can serve the Australian people best, part of our thinking has been around the development of, uh, of a, the professional model. So what we, what we looked at doing was to develop, in fact, three heads of professions. We looked at uh, strategic human resources, and as you know, Jackie Curtis is the head of that profession uh, from the tax department. We looked at the digital profession and Randall Brojou from DTA is the head of that profession. And the other big area we wanted to look at was, was data. And so this is why we've now moved uh, towards setting up a data profession and we'll also be launching a data strategy in the, in the near future. Because uh, these are areas around capability which the public service really needs to get right, both the way we manage our people the way we handle our technology and the way we handle data. And so in terms of how the public service best serves government and best serves the Australian people, the use of data, how we protect it, how we use it, it is absolutely fundamental to getting our programs and services right in providing advice to government and also in evaluating whether the programs we've got in the public arena are actually working. So. As I said, it's a great day to be here. It's really nice to be with David. I've known David a long time. And it's a true pleasure to be able to announce him as the head of, head of the, the first head of, the, uh, of the, the data profession. David's done a lot of thinking about uh, where he wants to take the profession, how he wants to use it, how he wants to best serve, best serve government and the people. And so it'll be a chance for him today to discuss in a bit more detail uh, how he's gonna do that. But congratulations, David. This is, I think, a really, a, a really good day. Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, it's certainly an honour uh, to be appointed by the Secretary Board as the uh, first head of the data profession. Uh, I agree with you that uh, data is uh, uh, an increasingly important part of the public service. It's, um, it's a foundational skill that um, we, need to, we need to see an uplift in capacity uh, to do um, high quality data analysis in the public service. Um, I've been head of the ABS now for eight months and I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about um, the, uh, what the, the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic has, uh, how that has um, highlighted the importance of um, expertise in data. Um, uh, but let me, let me say to start with that um, in my career as a public service economist, data has been important in uh, continuously in all, in, the, in all the roles that I've played, having an understanding of data and being able to analyse it in a, in a relatively sophisticated way. And I think it's important that we make sure that, that those skills are more widely um, available in the public service. So let me just spend a little bit of time on the ABS's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We, uh, it was clear to us in late February that uh, although, the, the, although the virus hadn't spread far in Australia, it was being incredibly disruptive overseas. 
and it and and we moved quickly to think about what things we could do that would better uh, position the government to be able to make uh, high quality decisions in an environment that was going to be changing quickly. And we introduced a lot of new products, uh, new quick surveys that um, uh, that our technology enabled us to put in the field quickly and analyse quickly. So uh, we were putting in, we were, we were um, running survey, small surveys of households and businesses of about a thousand each and we were analysing the uh, results within days and then publishing the results and then working with other departments, PM&C, Treasury, the Reserve Bank and the Health Department to refine the questions and change and, and keep up to date with, uh, with, what, uh, with what was needed. The other thing we did was uh, look for new data sources that would enable us to have a better sense of what was happening um, in the economy. And I want to talk a little bit about that because it's, uh, it gives you a window into the future. For a very long time, the ABS has been running uh, the Labor Force Survey, which is a big survey. It's 50,000 individuals and we'd run it once a month. And we publish the results four or five weeks after the, after the period, that we, the reference period. Uh, uh, the, working with uh, the tax office, we have in the COVID period, we got access to single touch payroll data. So rather than, uh, rather than looking at the behaviour of 50,000 people, single touch payroll gives us access to the labour force experience of over 10 million employees. And we can, we can publish the results within two and a half weeks. So that gives you a sense of just how revolutionary it is to be able to get access to big data sources. And why am I telling you this in some detail? Because it is very much the way of the future. Access, technology has technology and digital platforms, whether mobile phones or the web, have made possible access to data sets which are truly enormous. And that requires expertise to analyse them and to use them to their, to their maximum um, possibility. Now that's something that um, has meant that the government has very high quality information, much more uh, at, in much closer to real time than it, than it did previously. And that's a model for the future. And it's a model not just for the ABS, but for the data profession across the public service because, data, because real time or close to real time, big data sets are increasingly ubiquitous and available either from other public sector agencies or from the private sector. So it's the fact that this revolution is upon us uh, makes this a particularly uh, apposite time to be lifting the capability of data profession, professionals in the, uh, in the public service because uh, there's enormous benefit to be had from being able to analyse these things, um, uh, uh, being able to analyse these things um, uh, uh, in a way that, that, that generates value from them. So let me talk a little bit about the vision for the profession. I've talked about the fact that um, we're going to get access to new data sources and I've talked about the fact that um, we need, that, along with that has to come an uplift in capability of, of all our staff. So the idea of the data profession, there are going to be many streams to the data profession, but the, but the idea is to uh, is to create a, a, a cadre of people who ha have um, uh, higher level data skills, both people who are actually going to be producing data, but also those uh, often more senior roles, people who are going to be using data and for whom having, data having higher level data literacy is important for them to be able to analyse that data uh, in, a, in a sensible way. So let me stop there. Uh, that's, kind of a high, that's kind of a high level view of why this is a good time to be launching a data profession and also why it's important that along with new sources of data, we have an uplift in capability across the public service. I think that's absolutely right, David. The, the way the public service and the government have been able to integrate and use the data in relation to COVID-19 has just been fundamentally important in the way the government has been able to address all the economic, all the societal and all the health issues that have spilled out uh, from, from this crisis. 
So as you said, I think it's a really excellent time to be uh, taking this forward. So um, it's great, David, to actually have you now officially launched as the head of the profession. And you're obviously very passionate about the data profession and the work that you're doing here in, in the ABS. Um, I'm really interested in how you're actually going to build capability in the profession going forward. And I understand that there's a data strategy that is being endorsed and it has key elements in the strategy. So I was just wondering if you'd like to talk to us about that a little bit more. Certainly. I ought to start by emphasising the fact that although the ABS is going to play a, a big role in the data strategy, um, it, the, the way I see it is very much uh, APS-wide. The, uh, the ABS is a big user and producer of data, but it is by no means the only one in the public service. And it's important that this strategy very much be um, across the public service, and that's very much how I see it. We, in terms of the data um, profession streams, we're thinking about it in terms of four streams. So to begin with, we have to establish the data profession. And that includes the creation of a senior reference group and, and a professional network. And the aim of that is to guide and share professional uh, data standards and best practice. Um, the second element is uh, we're calling getting it right from the start. And that includes how we attract talent to the ABS, APS, um, lift entry level skills and improve the diversity of people in data roles. Um, in common with the other STEM professions, uh, there's a fairly narrow gene pool that feeds into the data in, into data professionals, and one of the one of the key elements of the data of the data profession is thinking about uh, creative ways to broaden that gene pool. And there are obviously a variety of ways in which you want to broaden the gene pool, but this is something that is a hard nut to crack but we want to give it a go because we think that part of, the, part of the success of this is to demonstrate to a wider group of people that this is an interesting profession. Um, the third is developing sophisticated and specialist capabilities, including identifying and promoting learning and development opportunities and designing uh, data role profiles so that you have a career structure. Uh, and then the fourth is embedding uh, a professional workforce, including building career pathways, professional communities, and professional standards. And part of that will be um, facilitating mobility of people with data skills between different parts of the APS that, you, that, that use data in different ways, to, um, because that's a way of, of again, um, broadening the, the profession. Look, if I can just come in um, on the back of those comments, David, and obviously one of the, the, the great attractions of you taking this job as Head of Profession is your wide experience across government, whether it be the Reserve Bank of Australia or Treasury or Prime Minister and Cabinet, and, and now, of course, as the Australian statistician. And that sort of understanding of the breadth of the use of data across the system and the real importance, as I talked about earlier, of the Australian Public Service operating as one enterprise, uh, as one entity, in dealing with what are an array of very complex problems uh, which, we have, which we're confronting at the moment. And so really attracted to some of your thinking around mobility and the idea of, of sending people across for stints and on some comments into other, into other agencies and other departments. And I think that's going to be a very important part of developing a sense of the data community and really, really building the capability of the profession. So thank you. Mm, and it's quite interesting um, because Peter's just talked about the thing that is really important to us at the moment with mobility and we see it with what's happened through COVID and we've had a lot of people surge to help other agencies. Um, with what you've just outlined with the strategy, um, there are a lot of elements in there and you obviously are quite passionate about all of it. but. I'd just be really interested in what's the thing that actually you really want to crack through? What's, what is it that you're really interested in and passionate about that you really want to achieve um, through the strategy and the data profession? So as you say, Mary, uh, it's, it's all important in the sense that in order to um, make this successful, uh, I think it's important to tackle it from different directions. Mm. Um, the diversity angle I'm interested in um, because I think 
Um, if you think about the things that are that are going to require sustained effort to make a difference, that's one of them. But I'd also pick up on the mobility one. Uh, and I guess the way to put that is you don't know what you're missing until you try moving somewhere else and seeing what the world looks like from a different organisation. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of different intensive data users across the public service. That's become p particularly clear to me in the time I've been here. Um, and so the, the idea of trying to improve mobility is definitely something I'm excited about. Um, and, uh, and I think um, I think people will get enormous benefit out of um, two-way secondments where they go off into another organisation with the skills they've already developed and see how another data-intensive organisation uh, manages its affairs. And we're already in discussions with the Bureau of... The, the, um, the ABS is already in discussions with the Bureau of Meteorology to, to, to do a pilot of... Um, two-way secondments, um, probably starting at the EL1 level, but we're very keen for others to join this pilot. So it's not as though, the, in, in no way is this exclusive, and it doesn't have to be, uh, so it doesn't have to be two-way secondments that always involve the, a, the ABS. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways that the data profession is gonna work is if uh, people use the framework to drive their own initiatives. And if two alt other organisations want to do two-way secondments uh, using, the simil using this model, then we're, we're extremely, uh, we would encourage that. So I think what we're going to do is start with a pilot and hopefully, um, uh, partly by word of mouth, people will, will realise just what a benefit this can be. Uh, and um, uh, I guess just going back to the single touch payroll case, that was an example of having people who knew the work of the ATO in sufficient detail to be able to realise just what a gold mine that was as a data source. Uh, and so I think there are going to be lots of examples like that where you have to know, where, you, where understanding the work of another agency or another department is critical in uh, in, um, in in making progress on on uh, on the data profession in general. Yeah, so um, that's um, that's actually quite um, an amazing um, vision that you've got there um, because it's talking about you know data right across all agencies and really a joined up whole of public service approach for the data profession. I mean, a lot of us use data every day in our work. Um, what I'd be really interested in is your views on who the data profession is for. So who is it that it is part of the profession that you're going to engage with? And just talk a little bit about that with us. Sure. So I, I think I see the data profession as being for people who are uh, kind of what you would classically call data professionals, namely people who have built up detailed expertise in data. And on that, we're in discussions with the universities about micro-credentials for improving people's data expertise. So that's another element of what I think is going to be necessary. So it's definitely for people who, uh, for, who, for whom a, a significant part of their career is about building expertise in data. And data's got lots of elements, confidentialization, um, uh, it, it, to do with uh, design of surveys, to do with um, there's, there's a there's a, a, a wide range of things that are involved in in modern data in being a modern data professional. So that's kind of one element of it. But the other element of it, and in a sense, this there are more people in the second camp, people who need to be sophisticated consumers of data. In other words, uh, th let me make an analogy. A well-designed smartphone, you do not need to be a digital native. The, the thing is completely intuitive and it just works. Oh. And anyone can pick it up. Um, you, probably it's better if you're younger, but nevertheless, anyone can pick it up and you, you can make a success of it. That, that does not work. If someone gives you the results of a survey, um, 
you have to actually have a, a, a reasonable level of understanding of, of what, what concepts like uh, standard errors or what the, you, you have to have some framework with which in, to be able to, to make sense of how, uh, how robust that information is. And being one, so one of the things we want to drive is not only uh, increased sophistication of data professionals, but increased data literacy amongst people who will increasingly be exposed to the output from data and statistics and have to uh, speak knowledgeably about it to ministers or to their superiors. Thanks, David. I guess I'd like to ask a slightly different question for you, and it goes to um, some of the challenges I think that we face in um, working in government at the moment. And it's the big issue of trust, trust in institutions, trust yep. in governments. Um, there are particular concerns, and we know with the public, that um, they're concerned about the use of data by, mm. by governments. Mm. I'm just wondering how you would actually see the data profession addressing a challenge like that more broadly. So um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed a lot of things and it turns out to also have had an effect on trust. Yeah. And the effect it's had on trust is to increase it. Uh, we have good statistical evidence that trust uh, as a consequence of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has gone up. Not massively, but statistically significantly. So why has that happened? It's happened because people have seen that the use of that data has has government collected data has done things that they can, they can see concrete benefits from, and that's a nice that's a nice uh, example. So if you can do this well, and you can demonstrate to people that it has benefits, then there are then then trust will will improve. Um, that's not to say it doesn't remain an issue because it, in the longer term. Uh, the t trust is still down relative to what it was years and years ago. But it is interesting that the, in, the, in the months of the pandemic, we have seen a rise in, uh, in, in, in trust in government and, and in trust in government's use of data. So I just wanted to start with that point. Um, but uh, how you use, how the government and the public service uses data is important in maintaining trust. And there are several elements of this. So to be seen to be using it for a purpose that people regard as legitimate is important. Um, to, to have protections that, um, that are, uh, that are well-defined and sophisticated to protect people's data, to be transparent about how, you do, how, about how you do it, to have respect for people's data so that, um, so that you treat it um, as the valuable thing it is. Um, to demonstrate the benefits and to be accountable when things uh, uh, when when something goes wrong, so there's a, there are there's a there are there are a range of there are a range of things in terms of using this uh, asset in a in a responsible and respectful way that can make a difference to people's attitudes to it, and there are. Um, there are documents and um, toolkits and guides about how to do this well. I think David's absolutely right. He set up those six principles, which I think are hugely important in, 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 in the use of data. And when you, when you think about trust and the Australian people's trust in government and the Australian public service, one is they expect the Australian public service to act with integrity in, in what it does, both in terms of the advice it provides and the way it deals, deals with, with, with Australians. But the other big part of that is around uh, delivery. How are we delivering? Are we, are we providing proper, proper programs? Are we doing things adequately? Are we actually meeting the, uh, the guidelines and, and the benchmarks that we've set ourselves in terms of our programs? And of course, data is fundamentally important to doing that, to being able to design a program, to be able to evaluate a program, to make sure we're actually meeting the expectations of Australians. Mm. So it is, a, it is a lot about delivery trust, I think. Yep. And that's where data becomes absolutely fundamental in terms of, in terms of meeting, um, meeting those, yep. that trust and those expectations from the Australian community. Can I, can I just steal the last word, Mary, and thank you for all your work done in setting up the profession and for moderating today's session. And can I particularly also thank David Gruen for taking on this task 
because this is in addition to his day job and it is a it is a big job to do it well and I really appreciate the fact that uh, you've stepped forward in the way you have so thank you thanks Peter thank you